girls, they're all so pretty. Yeah. Uh, and there's one. Yeah, it was great. It was just, I guess, a bunch of English blokes, and they, I think, I think, and they were, uh, they just made these animated, like, flash animation videos that, like, it was way before their time. You know what my favorite UK meme was? Hmm. I can't believe you've done this! Ah, that's my favorite. <laughs> so good. This is the One Punch Meme panel, right? One Punch Meme. One Punch Meme. Punch meme. <laughs> We're getting Ray a microphone. Hi guys, this is it. This is it? No? No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the One Punch Man panel! Hello! Hi, 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 hi. Guys, it's 8 p.m. on a Saturday night? Go to sleep! Get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, as the... So this is a One Punch panel. I am uh, Max Middleman. I am the One Punch Man. I play Saitama. Mm. This is Ray Chase. I'm going to introduce him because he doesn't have a microphone. I can still talk. It's no, so he's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my character's very loud. I uh, play Puri Puri Prisoner! Yes. <laughs> This is one hunchman panel, Dr. Genus, for that one episode. Woo! <laughs> oh, what? Whatever. Uh, this is Robbie Damon. He's not in the show. Aww. He plays Moomin Rider. Woo! Yeah. The cyclist for Justice. Justice. How do you pronounce that? Justice. I've never said that word. Before. It's Justice. Justice Crash. Uh, um, so, what, I don't know what this uh, necessarily is going to be about. I think it's a Q&A about the show, but it's also a Q&A about whatever you guys want, and maybe we'll do some of uh, <laughs> improv. No. No, we're talking about that. We have another panel tomorrow where we play. We have one last panel tomorrow where we play all the dumb games. Sure. Like the really dumb games. So sure. we let's let's make some rules. Let's limit this strictly to one punch man. Uh, nothing else. Nothing else. You can ask whatever you guys want. Can, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ask whatever you want. Oh, I, we're waiting for a microphone for Ray, so I'm guessing you're not gonna get one. So let's do the uh, uh, three-headed expert, but just the two of us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ray, ask us a question. What is the square root of 42? The square root one of... Wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, who has a question about One Punch Man first, and then we'll veer off into all sorts of strange directions after that. You're the one right there, there. yeah. Uh, this is for all three of you. Uh, have you guys attempted to do uh, Saitama's training? <laughs> Yes, we attempt. We talked about doing it, and then never did it. Do you guys remember that? I did. We talked about it, and like, how good of a like a long term vlog would that be? Yeah. And then we realized it's, it's, there's, it's there's an terrible, app which gets you to doing a hundred push ups. And oh, we did it for like a week. But the the it one it's hard. Yeah, and the one punch, the full routine is not practical. Uh, no. Uh, it. Uh, people have done it, and it ruins your knees. <laughs> yeah. The ten kilometers of running. Uh, Six miles. Did, did you know that? Did you know that Mayweather uh, runs ten miles a morning, no matter what? Like every morning. Like at Griffith Park. Yeah. Wow. He's a superhuman. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> and I'm just a regular, sort of chubby late thirties human. Uh, yeah, I've never done it before. It sounds hard. I don't know how many push-ups I could do right now. I have no idea. Two. Nah. Okay, two well, like Two million. million. 20 million. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, I saw another hand over here. <laughs> uh, yes? Uh, I know y'all are professionals, but like... Well... <laughs> so, in, in, the, in the particularly touching scene where Moomin Rider mm -hmm. is getting his walloped, yeah. Right? And it's just I think you can say like it. sad, right? Can say it. Can say yes. So like how how often did you guys just have to pause to be like, okay, I'm just too sad right now? <laughs> uh, I redid that scene twice, uh, because I made some acting choices and I argued with the director and then he reined re me back in and, and we did a better performance at the end of it. Uh, I wouldn't say that like I got so emotional I had to stop or anything. I was feeling the emotions from playing the action of the scene, but 
I don't think that I let the emotion of the scene take over the performance. I think that's an important thing to be careful of. I used to tell my, I used to teach acting when I was a grad student. I used to tell my students, I used a jokey term called uh, emosturbating, where, uh, you know what it means, uh, where you're just emotionally wallowing in your own uh, emotion. And uh, I don't recommend that. It's not a good thing. But it should make you feel something. You should have emotions underneath the actions. When you, uh, when all your clothes burst off and you fly across the sky like an angel, are you so elated with ecstasy that you had to stop recording sometimes? Uh, you know what's crazy is his, he's really sad because it's the headnet sweater his boyfriend made for him. That's right. Who's his boyfriend? Who is Cory Cory Prisoner's boyfriend? He had never talked about it in the show. He had a prison boyfriend. He had someone. Listen, who, let me tell you, when you go to prison, you better get a prison boyfriend quick. <laughs> what do they call this? A jail mail? <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, someone loved him, and I, I wonder who that is. And I think in season two, it's just going to be all about 44 Prisoners. Mm -hmm. Boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's hard to be super emotional anime because you have to go one line at a time over and over again to get the um, the sync correct. So there's only so much. Uh, there's so much over the topness that you can do because after one line is done, you have to stop and then do it again and then stop and then do it again. Uh, it's pretty rare that we get to do fun monologues. I I I did a show called A Lull in the Sea and uh, I played this character who basically. Basically, everyone, uh, he goes into a coma for a long time when he comes out, he's still like the same age. It's some of the favorite work I've ever seen Max do. <laughs> the part where you're in a coma. <laughs> no, you don't like that joke? Ah, come on, guys, did I need to explain it? Anyway, so, um, whatever, whatever, what, and, and so everybody else was older than him, and so he, it's really, if, if you put yourself in that position, it's actually a really uncomfortable thing. Like, can you imagine, like, just being in a coma, and then five years later, everybody else is, it moved on with their lives, and you are, you haven't, and it's super strange. And uh, I got kind of emotional at the scene, and it, it, there was yelling involved, and crying, and snot and tears, and I, I did the take that was awesome with the tears and the snot and everything, and I totally was just waiting for my director to be like, Max, amazing, let's move on to the next line. And instead he goes, we gotta do it again. You were uh, you, you went over you went over the cut. So uh, let's just redo it. And I was like, bro, how, I uh, what? I did it. Gave you gold. Uh, and just a little too much gold. A little too just much. A little too gold much. and uh, not enough uh, per good performance. But anyway. Uh, it, it, <laughs> What do you, what do you think about, what do you think about? Well, you know, I think about. Uh, yeah. What do you think about right now? <laughs> What's in your mind? That chicken sandwich that I had, and I, how was it? Pretty. You know, it was too burned. They burned the chicken, no, and no, all you, you had the, you had the room service one. Yeah. Yeah, it was really. I think it's it was blackened chicken. Blackened yeah. and not good. This is not the first time you guys have been surprised by blackened chicken. We've had so many meals together. And you're like, my chicken right was burned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, why is my chicken burned? And I'm like, it literally says Cajun blackened chicken right in the menu. Oh, Cajun. Anybody else have a question, guys? <laughs> this is going great. You pick one. Yes, right there. Uh, are you guys doing uh, season two for the English dub? We, so season two, everyone, the big question on everyone's mind, are you, get your phones out and record me, I'm about to tell you right now. I have no idea, no idea, no idea, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I have no clue, they don't tell me anything, um, they really don't, truly. I'll be find out like a few days before we start recording. And they're like, ready to come in? And I'm like, sure. Um, so, they don't tell me. You know what makes me suspicious? Welcome. <laughs> Do you know what makes me suspicious as a, as a fan? Is the fact that they're rerunning it on Toonami in about a month. Oh, yeah. That always makes me suspicious to think that there might be something coming down the pipe because they don't usually do that unless they're planning to relaunch the second season or something like that. That's, that's, but that's just me hypothesizing as, as a layman. We haven't heard anything about it yet. But yeah, why would they do that if they weren't thinking about trying to Why would they do that? Yeah. Let's all put our collective minds together. Come on, buddy. Money. Oh, there's the answer. The proper answer. Anybody else have a question? Pick another one, Saitama. You choose. So this is specifically for your characters in One Punch Man. 
How do you get into character? <laughs> I love Cory Cory Prisoner. He's so much fun. I just any time that he's because you know he's got his big scenes where he's naked, but then he also has the scenes where he's that. That's one scene with Saitama where he's just sitting there uh, at the 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 S rank heroes meeting, and uh, I just try to put everything as sexual as possible. Yeah. That even though he's not particularly turned on by Saitama, but he is particularly turned on by Saitama. <laughs> uh, so I try to do that as much as I possibly can. And you know what, I'm gonna say this here, even though it's not true, I do all of my uh, voice acting for him naked. Uh, nice. <laughs> and it really helps get into the character, yeah. <laughs> I do a hundred sit-ups, a hundred push-ups, a hundred squats! Damn, that mic's loud. Vivid Chen! I give up. Um, <laughs> what do I do? I, I, I try to get as bored as humanly possible. Um, and so I watch old uh, vlogs of Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good joke. I'll stamp of approval. Uh, no, I, I, to get into character, I literally like, I, sh I think I, I'm trying to think what I do, it's been so long, but I think I like, I shrug a lot. It's, it's a lot of like, I don't know, I'm bored and I've got nothing to do. I don't, uh, that's a boring story. Robbie, you spice it up. You're doing great. Sprinkle a little pesto in his mouth. Are we talking about dead names? Yeah. He's still doing things. Oh he's a man. He's a restaurant. He's a, he's, famous. he's a superstar. Yeah. Hey, you guys are asking us questions. Before I answer mine, raise your hand if you're not old enough to go see an R-rated movie by yourself. <laughs> how, how long do you have to wait? You're, you're 15? And you're 14. 13. So we're PG-13. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I always like to ask. <laughs> Got it. I ride a bicycle to every session. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm wearing spandex under my normal clothes, but that's just normal. I need a joke answer for I, uh, I go coupon cutting. It's all right. Is that good? Yeah, uh, it's like a B minus. I, 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 cut off your hair. I, I shave my head when I'm in the recording booth. That's good. That's not uh, bad. But only like a small strip. <laughs> <laughs> and so by the end of the recording, I have like part of it growing out, and then part of it's like really short. Mm -hmm. And, and I end up having Saitama's name stitched into the back of my head. Not stitched, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Shaved. Buzzed. Grown? Buzzed. Buzzed. <laughs> Max, you gotta pick the next person. Okay, I'm waiting. Do you know they gave us these sunglasses? We all have a pair of them now. What does it say on the side? Turn this way. Tourism Winnipeg. Nice. We had a discussion earlier. You what just is, cut it off. I'm sorry, I'll, you'll get, I'll get back to you. Uh, what do you guys call yourselves? Are you weird Win Winnipeggers? Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I like Winnipegos, because it's like Winnipego. Yeah, that's a good one. about Winnipego? Winnipegans. But it's Winnipeggers. Winnipegger. That sounds dirty to me. <laughs> It feels inappropriate. It's not dirty, but just like a slur. Yeah, it does. But I, but I would feel bad, like if I, if, if I really liked you and I, and I liked you because you were from Winnipeg, and I went, "Hey, you're a real Winnipegger." I, if you were outside of the circle, if you were outside of the circle, someone would go, "That guy's a jerk." Yeah. <laughs> All right, Winnipeggers. If you're annoyed at someone from Manitoba, not just Winnipeg, you call them a Tobin. A Tobin. 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 You know he yeah. plays a character named Tobin. In fire rapper, yeah. Yeah. And the catchphrase is Shut up, Tobin. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Uh so what where were you? Oh I was just hanging out with a bunch of winter papers. <laughs> it feels good. I like yeah. it. What was your uh, question that I covered? Sort of for all of you? Sort of. My question is since One Punch Man is a a silly show, it's really silly. It's um, a satire for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what is the dumbest, funniest uh, thing your characters have said in your your opinions, your personal opinions. Silliest thing our characters have said. Um, like the absolute dumbest. The absolute dumbest. The absolute dumbest thing for, that I can think of for my character was I uh, I will not play rock paper scissors with you. You've got a booger on your finger. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
amazing. <laughs> what about you, Ray? Uh, yeah, very, he doesn't say anything silly at all. Big <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, I like it when he's, uh, he's he goes uh, to Lightning Max in the hospital and has a big old syringe. He's just excited. He's about those boys, and I just I think it's so it's just so creepy. So it's not it's not so silly. It just frightens me in my dreams uh, a lot. Uh, I think, uh, I love how serious Moomin Rider is for all of his attacks. So the first time he does, Justice Crash! I just think that's the best because he means it from the bottom of his heart. Like all 16 pounds of that bicycle are going to do this guy in. That's the move that's going to make it all the better. <gasps> we need a uh, mic. He's so nice. All right, let's move on. Another question. <clears throat> yes. Right over there, yes. Could you beat up Goku? Oh. So, so, listen carefully. The title of the show is One Punch Man, right? One Punch Man. One Punch Man. One Punch Man. Who has a move called Consecutive Normal Punch? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, of course. of course. Yes, yes, he would beat Goku in one punch if he really wanted to. Yes. I feel like One Punch Man somewhere along the way was like, we're a satire, we're a satire. Oh crap, people are taking us seriously. We should be serious now. Did you feel like that changed the way you acted your characters? What, when, at what point would you say that happened? I think right around when it got really sad. I'm like, this seems out of character for I, the show. I think even a show that is a satire, be, I think the brilliance of uh, One Punch Man, and it, it, it had such intelligent writers that they added that um, emotional aspect of the show, which gave it the 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 heart that it, it, it needed to be, I feel like, um, uh, such a, uh, to, um, how, how do I put this? To, 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 play, to, uh. Listen, uh, the show is a great show, period. <laughs> here's what I'm trying to say. Ray, do you have an here's what I'm trying this? to say. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there. Um, what I'm trying to say is the show has uh, a lot of heart, and I think that's what makes it great. I, I do. I, if, I think if it were just jokes the whole time, all 12 episodes, it would be like, okay, we get it. But, and, and, and I hope season two is way different than season one. Well, I think, I think that one of the differences is, is between satire and parody. Because satire has to live within the realm of reality, right? It's one of my favorite satires, Stephen Colbert. Like, but he, he never really broke character. And, 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 and that's what makes satire satire, is that the, the character that's, that's being played lives in that world, as, as opposed to parody, yeah. where I feel like there's a wink and a nod, and the people who do parody know yeah. that, that they're doing parody. So for them to have serious scenes and, and do a show that has a top to bottom plot, I think that you need that. I, there is a definitely a little more serious shift in the Sea King arc and everything beyond that, but I still think it remains satire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the Boros episode, like one of them, that's where the famous thank you. the okay, thank you, uh -huh. the very the famous famous okay is right. Like in the very last the episode. Very last episode. Yeah. yeah. So it always has that playful edge. Yeah, always. And and I don't know if it was necessarily like. Who knows? I wasn't in the in the writers' room, but like I don't know if it was necessarily the writers going, um, uh, okay, at episode seven we're gonna make it really serious. I think it was just a natural progression of the show. Like I don't think it was it, it, they meant for the first four or seven episodes to be extra light and then to have that crazy tonal shift. I think that was just naturally they walked into that and they were like, yeah, that works. And I think knowing what 
when it could be different for anime production depending on the production. But I think knowing what we know about cartoon production in general, there wouldn't be enough time. There wouldn't be enough time between episode one and seven for them to make a shift based on audience reaction, I don't think. I think it was probably scripted top to bottom before it went Yes. Out. I don't think you'd be able to do it within a season. Now, if, we, if it suddenly drops in season two, and it's more tropey and serious and less satire, then it'll have jumped a shark already, but I, I, I don't think they'll do that. But my favorite shows, my favorite artists, uh, my favorite creative people and projects evolve. They evolve. They, they don't stay stagnant, and they don't... Uh, anybody like Marshmallow? <laughs> the artist, Marshmallow? The last two albums he put out sound identical, right? I, he's making a ton of money because of it, but also, like, I don't care about that music anymore. Like, I, I used to like it because it sounded new and interesting, and now I just don't care. I was listening to another artist um, uh, by the name of Grizz, and... Um, my point is just that he's got five albums, and each of them sound distinctly different from the previous. And the last album he did, because he tried something new, he blew up from it. I mean, he, he got super popular. All of three of those songs became pretty good, uh, not super hits, but really popular. So my Are you point saying is, you're going to change his voice for season my two? My point is for season two, he's going to have a half shot now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a call from a Beverly Hills number. Should I answer it? Yes. Do it right now. That's probably an accountant or something. I'm, I'm gonna send it to voicemail. Oh come on! Man. It's a touch of tease. Um, now, now I'm worried. This is your doctor. Butt cream is in. Exactly. What kind of butt cream? We need to know. Uh, uh, let's ask another question. Back to one, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, this one's for Max. Uh, did you accidentally break character on the uh, checkmate uh, scene? Checkmate, where he says... Uh, checkmate, and he accidentally punches uh, Speed of Sound Sonic in the balls. Oh, oh did, I break, did I break character? Yeah. Like, in the booth, could I not keep it together? Yeah. Um, I think I kept it together for that one. Uh, it was very funny. Here's when I don't keep it together. When the director plays outtakes for me of the person who was just in before me. <laughs> uh, and say, like, if the... They'll keep... I explain this better than me. You explain it better than me. When the when you go in and you record an outtake and then they play it in my, my cans uh, before I record and and it throws me off my game, so I can't record. Yeah, they won't tell you that uh, somebody's called bombing someone if you leave an outtake in there, then you go home, next day, next person comes in, and they just play your bombed take right before they're about to uh, to go in. And that's always fun, because the sync works, and you, you never see it coming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would be like, instead of checkmate, it would be like if Speed of Sound Sonic, Eric Kimmer went in to record after me, and he was expecting... No, after me, after. and he was expecting me to say checkmate, and instead I was like, ball-tastic. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that is what you said, right? Yeah, yeah, I said that initially, yeah. Um, yeah, any more questions? Oh. In the back? Can I show you my one plus man tattoo? Yeah. Yes. Wait, where? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it of a okay? Alright, we're in a panel. Let's see it. He's punching. Oh, what's your actual best? That is the coolest! Oh, oh you guys! Oh, a camera works? Come on! <laughs> there we Put go. it over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Is that the real One Punch Man and Seal of Approval? Okay. <laughs> it's very cool, guys. It's got Saitama's fist becoming her fist. It's very cool. Can I, tell you, can I tell you guys a joke? Sure, while I listen to the voicemail. <laughs> it's a little bit of a dirty joke, but I think it's PG-13. Uh, are you ready? So my dear, sweet, departed grandmother, uh, passed away when she was 80. She was uh, five feet tall, the tiny little, sweet little woman, but she was a little, had a little sassy side to her. And she could not tell a joke to save her life. Just couldn't tell a joke. Her, in fact, I'll tell you, her favorite joke that she butchered every time was, uh, 
a little cat had a mouse and it was dangling over the mouth and he was like, I'm going to eat you, I'm going to eat you. And the mouse said, no, no, don't eat me. And the cat said, I'm going to eat you. And the, mouth, and the mouse said, are you going to eat me whole? And the cat said, no, I'm going to spit that part out. That was her favorite joke. <laughs> right, it's not great, right? It's, that's not a great joke, but that was her best one. So anyway, one, one day around Christmas, I had just gotten my first tattoo, and it was this Zelda t tattoo that turned into a Zelda sleeve. And uh, I was 18, and I was like, okay, well, I'm, they're, they're going to see it. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. There we go. So the whole family got talking about cartoons. There's about 30 cousins I have, and my grandma was like the matriarch of the family, just out of nowhere pipes up after a few gins and goes, well, I have a tattoo. And we all go, what? Like, Grandma, you have a tattoo that's right, it's like in her late 70s. And we're like, yeah. And, uh, and she's like, oh, like, well, what is it? I was like, what? Can you show us? And she goes, well, I can't show you. And we were like, oh, Grandma, what? And she goes, oh, I got it so long ago. I got a, well, it's a little Mickey Mouse, and it's right here. Oh, my it. <laughs> My grandma ever told us, and I thought I would share it with you. Uh, <laughs> Take that, Winnipeggers! <laughs> I think we have a question up for us. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Um, this is probably very dangerous for me to say, but I've never watched One Punch Man. One Punch Man! Uh, <laughs> I haven't really had an interest in watching it, but. Mm -hmm. I would like you guys to sell me on your characters, but describe them in a really obscure and weird way, okay? <laughs> yeah, I like it. Obscure, weird way of selling. What if we did it like in bad, like, beat poetry? Sure. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be like, Win uh, me over. Spandex, speed in the night. Gears flying through the city streets. I am the strongest, top of class C. I'll save you, that little bitty kitty in a tree. I'll come and get you and fight the sea king. But what'll happen? I don't know what the future will bring. Maybe I'll save another hero. Maybe he'll die. Maybe he'll get spit on saving that little girl or that guy. I'll be your hero. I know that I can. Smack, smack, boom, boom, blam, blam. It's over. My story is gone. What's going to happen next? I don't know what went wrong, but I'll tell you what. I'm the one, the only, the moon man rider. You know. Homie, homie. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, an expressive beatbox uh, to explain what my character is like. <laughs> uh, Saitama fan. He's just such a. F <laughs> Ugh. He's my kind of misery. Saitama carries <laughs> the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. There's not a whole lot of anime leads who are like. There's no anime leads who are like. I don't know anybody else who's like Saitama. 
Yeah. He's definitely his own his own category. A, a, a true misanthrope, a yeah. truly wor world weary person. Uh, I can't think of really another point like it. Yeah. Hey, what's that time's last name? Jones. <laughs> Stop Tama Jones. Uh, He's only Saitama. Saitama. Because he was a, a salary man. He just was a dude whose name was Saitama what? Igasake. Why did you bring this up? I don't I'm know. curious. Is, I, does it exist? Maybe he's just like Cher. Yeah, I don't know. He's just Cher. He's just Cher. Hi. Uh, it's a new name. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Anyway. Another question? Uh, yeah. I, so you had a question that we'll go over there. Yes. Um, if there was. If you had control over an episode, mm. so do, being able to do anything you wanted, what would that be? I would want to follow. Uh, I would want to follow some of the B class heroes for a day. I want to do one of those filler episodes where you follow like Stinger and Lightning Flash and like because we kind of already we get a taste of like what C class heroes do because Saitama was one in the beginning and then we we do get a taste of like what Moomin Rider's up to. He's saving cats and like doing basic stuff. I want to know what the B class heroes do. Like what's the in between stuff? What's the lower threat level stuff that they're handling? It's probably pretty sweet. It's probably yeah. like more like Batman yeah. instead of like Superman. I would I would follow them. I would want to do an episode of Saitama in middle school. <laughs> flashback episode. Yeah, the flashback episode, and you see if he if he has friends. Does he you know what is he into? Like, was he a good student? Did the teachers hate him? Like, is he a class clown? I, I want to know all that. I'd love to see. Uh, I'd love to see what Boros is. Training like a parallel uh, episode about what his life was like being Saitama esque on his alien home planet. I'd love to see the uh, the parallel universe A, B, and C and S class yeah, heroes. He get on. Exactly, yeah. Did he lose all his hair from right. training too hard? Right. Yeah. Who's his Kremlante? Right. <laughs> Probably Kremlante. Yeah. 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 What is your favorite part about playing each of your characters in One Punch Man? Mm, favorite part about playing each of our characters in One Punch Man? Um, I think it's the, for me it's the heart. I just think that I like pure char I do like pure characters. I mean, obviously it's fun to play a complex character like Saitama, but like sometimes it's nice just to play an honest, good soul. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the time, Saitama is bored and talks like this, and and that's fine. But I really, really like when he gets super animated, and uh, in two different ways. One, where in like the mosquito scene, where he's like, get back here, and two, um, when he's telling, when he's explaining to Genos the One Punch workout, and he gets very, very serious. And uh, I love that. Like it's t the, the animation is totally different. I think it's so cool that they, they did that. Uh, Porter Burger is obviously very funny, but I'll talk about Dr. Uh, Genus, who I played all 26 of his clones in that one episode. And it was really <laughs> fun going back. We did Clone A. We did the whole episode, and someone spotted where Clone A was in every single shot. And then we went back and did Clone B, and then Clone C, and then in one shot, there's 20 of him, and I recorded every single one. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> was there somebody else? Yes. Have you guys watched the show before you did your roles? Did we watch the show before we recorded? Uh, I watched the show because Ray told me to watch the show. When we got the auditions, we got auditions for five characters. I auditioned for Saitama, Genos, Moomin Rider, Speed of Sound Sonic, and uh, uh, My Bang. Mask. A oh, My Mask. I do Whatever happened. happened. Do I yeah. I think he's supposed to have a better story arc. I think he's got. A, if you follow along, I think he's got a big arc in season two. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Mm. Maybe not. <laughs> you just drop him, yeah. They dropped him, yeah. Interesting. Whoa. I thought I was gonna get a my mask because I'm um, tuxedo mask. I thought they were gonna do because they were known. They were known for doing clever casting. Because, you know, like, one of the titans was... Vegeta, right. or, yeah, yeah, yeah one Piccolo's. of those. Uh, that, that oh, yeah, Man right. was Piccolo, all of that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that they would do 
that. They didn't. But yeah, for those who haven't watched the show, fun, fun little uh, uh, Easter eggs is that uh, first episode, Piccolo, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> Vaccine Man, there's a character named Vaccine Man, and he looks just like Piccolo, but he's like a different color, and uh, uh, it's played by the guy who voices Piccolo. Yeah. And then um, there's a Titan in the first episode, just a giant, meaty Titan, and uh, it's played by Bryce Pappenbrook, who plays Aaron Yeager. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so, Vic Mignogna plays uh, plays Messel 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 Gary Yugen shoot Gary Yugen Mills goes guard. That's a nod to one of his things. Yeah, I'm sure. I just don't remember which one. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I can't remember what the question was. Oh, well, oh, yeah, we watched it before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I just for five characters. So, I, I, Ray and I were talking beforehand, and I was like, "Did you see this new anime?" Yeah. Uh, Ray's like, "You've got to watch it." And I was like, "Oh, dude, it's just an anime. I get it. I mean, I get the tone and everything." He's like, "No, no, no. You don't understand. You have to watch it." I was like, "I really don't want to." I don't have the time. He's like, watch it! So I watched the first episode, and I was hooked, and I binged the other 11, and then, um, and then I auditioned for it. And it made me <laughs> really nervous, <laughs> because then I really wanted it. I really, really wanted it. So that's, that was my, my story. Yeah, I watched it too. I think my dad watched it. My dad doesn't watch anime, but he came over through well for something and he was hanging my house for like a week. I was like, you wanna watch One Punch Man? He's like, what is it? We watched it in like we watched it in like two days. He loved it. Oh, yeah. cool. It's really easy. I had so many uh, by the way, I, there's so many people who come up to me uh, and and young people and say the show was so great. I bonded over over it with my dad, and it's crazy how many people come up to me and say that. Well, it's very it's very watchable from a non even though even if you don't understand the anime tropes they're playing against the satire, it's so clear that it's satire and the comedy's so clean. You got like some of us here. Uh, very cool. We still we got about 18 minutes. We still glad to answer all your One Punch Man questions. But if you would like to open the floor up to other non One Punch Man questions for the 11 people here who haven't seen it, uh, <laughs> let's let's answer the remaining One Punch Man questions. Of course. And if you have a One Punch Man question, I see one, two, three, four, five. So we'll we'll start start with with uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we'll start with you. Yes. I actually have two questions. One is One Punch Man. One is not. Okay. Um, both for Rob. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> you said you bonded with your dad over the show. Mm. Um, what was his opinion when he found out you were in the show? <clears throat> Does he not know yet? He knows I'm in stuff. They watch my stuff. They watch my stuff. My parents are good about that. They like the funny stuff. And I think that's why he liked One Punch Man, because it's funny and action-packed. I don't think I can sit my dad down and get him to watch, like, DBZ or Attack on Titan or something. Not because he doesn't appreciate it, it's just not his cup of tea, but like he was, he was into One Punch Man. Yeah, definitely. And he knows the stuff I'm in. My parents are really good about that. Like, okay. they'll, they'll throw on their DVR and watch Disney or Cartoon Network or whatever and see what I got to. And they'll be like, oh, I really like that last episode of Spider Man. Like, they're good at that. Okay. Yeah. My mom just said to me, she goes, um, Max. <laughs> she was saying, I need to make space on the DVR. Are you in any of these Ben 10 episodes? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Some of them, they're repeats, so I'm sure I'm in. She's like, well, which ones can I delete? I was like, Mom, just delete all of them. It's constantly airing. <laughs> just like yesterday. Yeah. Um, the other question was, out of all your roles mm -hmm. that you've played, mm -hmm. which one is your favorite? What's your favorite role? I once played uh, a gasping taco, and I have to say, I, I don't know, there, there's, you can't pick a favorite, I don't know, I really, one of my most reviled shows that I love the most was Breadwinners, I played, uh, I don't know if you guys get that cartoon here or not, people hated it, ah, it's one of my favorite cartoons. On Nickelodeon? On Nickelodeon. Have you seen Breadwinners? Mm, exactly, that's why it's, that's <laughs> what is one, two, three, you don't have to be ashamed, it's just a show about ducks, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's got a special place in mind. It's one of my favorites. It's my first lead, lead, lead in an in a, in a animated cartoon. And, and my first guest in an animated cartoon. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that show. One of my favorites. In the anime world, it would probably be... Crollo. Mm. Anime. What's your favorites? What's your favorites? She didn't ask us. Yeah, I know she didn't ask us. I'm asking you. I'm asking <laughs> you guys. What is it? What do you like? Uh, you know what I really like? 
I was on the plane yesterday and I saw an episode of Lena Valvore that I did. Um, a character called Bobo the monkey. And I, I really love playing that character. I'm not laughing at your character, I'm just laughing at the name Bobo. It's There's, a great gotcha. There's another episode coming up with, with him in it, and it's awesome. It's, it's maybe my favorite thing I've ever done. Huh. I thought he was annoying but funny. <laughs> And not funny. That's well, he was, he was supposed to be. He was a monkey that like steals things and like causes mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, never, never trusted Bobo. Never trusted Bobo. <laughs> or Nabob. Yeah, that's true. What? <laughs> I love Noctis, of course, because it's great to be able to play uh, someone for so long and play their entire story from start to finish. Um, but Roy also has a really special place in my heart from Fire Emblem because he's someone who I played when I was a kid. I, the, those opportunities don't come very often in voice acting. We're always auditioning for new roles. But to be able to play someone who I, I'd grown up with was a, a real treasure. Mm. Yeah. All right, I saw four One Punch questions left. Um, yes. Do you have any line flubs you can share? Line flubs we can share? Ooh. From One Punch Man? Man, I just come and go so quick. Yeah. Um, I know I've said fart instead of part many times. <laughs> yeah. I know. It, it, it's all dependent sometimes on like the lip flap and what you can get away with. Like, you can make some stuff really sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not really a flub. That's no. a, yeah. Oh, flubs. I s flubs. I think mouth noise flubs are the funniest. Like when they're in the middle, oh, God. they're in the middle of a line, but you're 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 doing, and your mouth just makes a noise that you you wouldn't be cognizant of if you weren't listening to yourself at headphones. Yes. Like the, hey, I'm, then it would just <laughs> your mouth just goes, and you don't know yeah. why. Like you, you know, you have like little air bubbles stuck in your throat, uh, in these weird places, and 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 <laughs> this, this happened to me. This past week, where I was just about to record a really serious line in that show, uh, anyway, that we were doing together, and uh, just before the line, it was like, when you're recording uh, anime, you hear beep, 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 and then you record on the fourth imaginary beep. So it went, beep, 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 boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and just my, my throat made this weird sound, and the director saw that her cat caught it, the engineer caught it, they were cracking up, and we had to start over. That's the, the, that's the throat burp, they're weird. Oh. But they're not real burps, they're, they're not just like your muscles uh, doing weird things. They yeah. do them all the time, but when there's an actual microphone, it suddenly becomes very, very apparent. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, uh, yes, uh, uh, so there's three OPM questions left, if you have them. Yes? Happen in the back. Uh, at least for all three of you, since you uh, do like an improv group, would you actually uh, want to do uh, a music video parody of the theme? A music video parody of the theme? We're always accepting applications for new ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, we would do that for But sure. one guy did it best. Did you see the guy that did the full recreation of it with like cardboard and like he had like gloves on? It's very good. Yeah. We might have been beating the bunch on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, favorite facial expression in One Punch Man. A uh, favorite facial expression. Well, I have to think about it. I have to think about it. I think my movement one was is the one where he's bent over and it's the uh, the down shot while he's on all fours and he's just like <laughs> he's just like crying and bleeding and bleeding and crying. That's yeah. a good one. I like when Puri has his uh, badass moment where he comes the dark uh, angel rush. Where he's just, he's actually serious, so all just covered in black and darkness. I love that one. I like the, in the one of the last episodes, second to last or last, when uh, Gary Yung and Shoop is like, go left! And uh, Saitama is like, okay! And then he goes the other direction. He's like, <laughs> 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 it's my favorite. <laughs> the face is amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I laughed watching it twice, and then I laughed in the booth on the preview, and then I couldn't get through it because I laughed again. I remember that specifically was so funny. Uh, I think that was the last of the OPM questions. Do we have one more? Yes. Um, what was your favorite lines from your own characters and then from any other characters in the show? Favorite lines from our characters and then other characters. Uh, well, uh, Booger on the Finger was my favorite. <laughs> Uh, other character was a uh, whoopsh brother. Oh my god! Yes. 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 Y
reaction face on Saitama there, where he's just like... <laughs> Who is that voice actor? Uncredited. Oh, so right. so oh, yeah. Nobody will ever know us. No reason. Yeah. What is it? Oh, any other questions? We have a little bit. Team I oh, we have ten minutes. Yeah, okay, so let's go over here. So yes. Uh, I know it's often a controversial question about what is anime. And I'm curious as to your opinions. Is does it have to come from Japan? Or can North America produce anime? Let's answer this question as a three-headed expert. <laughs> Let's repeat the question first. Uh, is anime, can anime be from anywhere but Japan? Anime is one of the interesting forms of entertainment. So, anime will make you cry. <laughs> Anime will come in your <laughs> television. Television <laughs> on demand and oh and only in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but as far as anime being produced in North America, what was that show that uh, uh, Ruby. Will Smith's son is in? Ruby. R Ruby? Ruby. R W B Y. Will Smith? You mean the Neo Yokio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neo Yokio. Oh boy. I don't think it counts. <laughs> it's like anime is from Japan. Yeah. I think anime is from Japan. And well, what that's, that's not anime. That's not anime. Well, it's well, Western. Well, it's well, inspired. Well, it's well, inspired. Well, it's well, inspired. Well, it's well, anime inspired. Well, but also the studio that did Avatar, Studio Mir, which is based in Korea. Right. So, not well, does it, because it does create cat? Is it anime? No, anime yeah. is from Japan. Japan anime. Japan anime. Let's just go back to the 90s and call it Japan anime. Yes. Uh, Sweet, that's my choice. I choose Japan anime. Uh, alright. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know, like, you guys do video game voice acting as well. Like, you yourself, Max, was Prince Veronis in World of Warcraft. I was. So, do you guys, like, enjoy doing video game or anime, or is it any, like, different? It's very different. We love both. It's so different. We love both. We love both. In video games, you get to be, you get to really, oh man, it's so, video games are cinematic, you get to be, you get to be cinematic, uh, and um, you get to act differently. You can, you can be super, super, super real and gritty, and uh, you're not tied to somebody else's performance. It's your performance. That's another thing. It's original characters. Um, at least for American games. For Japanese games, you, you do have to match it a little bit, but what do you think? Uh, I, pref <sighs> I prefer video games, I think. From a performance standpoint, I think I prefer video games. I, I enjoy them both, I do, and I think that I try to give them as much artistic integrity that they're capable. But there's just something about the restrictions of anime that make it hard from a performance standpoint. You do your very best. Like, I think we all three of us agreed and we're like-minded that when we do an anime, we want to do the best acting job that we can. It's had such a bad rap for such a long time, and I think we've come such a long way in dubbing that we're just really trying to give it some heart and soul these days. Um, that being said, there was some good heart and soul performances back in the day too. The video games just give you a little bit more freedom. Yeah, with anime, all the choice, all the acting choices are made for you. Every single breath, you have to do exactly what the uh, yeah. what the animator, not just the Japanese voice actor, but every single thing is already animated and done. So you're just showing up and doing your own thing. If I told, oh, go ahead. If I. <laughs> 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 Think about this though. In Japan, it's original animation for them. <laughs> They're doing what we do for original animation Western style. So uh, yeah. that yeah. And it's a unique set of challenges. Totally. If I told you to tell a joke and then I said bi bum 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 bi bi bum bum bada bum stop, and that's the rhythm you have to tell your joke in, you're going, oh, I'm gonna make that funny. <laughs> so then, how do we make that funny or emotional or passionate? It's or tough. Sad? And it takes a lot of work, and the, the reason like One Punch Man is funny is because there's a lot of smart people in America working to make that adaptation uh, accurate and, and make those jokes translate well.
Also, though, it depends on the project. I would rather do a really heartfelt anime than go in and be like, FRAG OUT for 10 hours. So I think that's the worst. It depends on the game. Uh, Sub-characters in video games are, can, uh, can be uh, a bear. Sometimes we just turn them down. Sometimes, depending. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, do we answer? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what do you think is the professional uh, Oh. I've literally never talked to a soul about yeah, it. Yeah, no, we don't talk to like, Yeah. It, uh, I think it's a pile of it's shit more with, a, with a few little... little <laughs> it's more of a... With a few little thing. nuggets of gold in it. It's like, you gotta sift through it to get to the little golden corn nuggets. Yeah. yeah that's about it. Yeah. Someone yeah. once said that you should watch it in the same way that you watch uh, those YouTube... Uh, those YouTube book group videos. Where you just, like, completely re-edit and... Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, like you don't deserve this big Toblerones of great <laughs> moments when the fireball chases him and says, like, get back here, bitch! Like, that's great, but it's, I don't know. I don't know anybody who made it. I wouldn't watch it for enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch it out of a morbid curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? Questions? Questions? Yes. Uh, what, are your, some, what are some of your favorite lines of fireball characters? Favorite lines is Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem! Heroes! Oh. The loudest line in all eternity <laughs> when you turn on your app. My favorite line is when Leo says, Tomatoes. It's fine. Oh, no? Nothing? Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't remember a single line that I recreated. That's like the, I can't believe I'm giving this answer. It's my biggest pet peeve when actors don't know their stuff. And that game, I just cannot. Well, because you've only done heroes. Like ding dang. I don't know how you get Tobin. That's right. It's Tobin and Fates. In I think he, he has a monologue about how he thinks that he'll never be as good as Um. I think that was my favorite little moment, like where he realizes. Not only does he think he won't, he realizes he will never be as good. So all he has to do is be his best. I think that was my favorite moment for that character, though I don't remember the exact lines. Uh, we, we, have, we, have, right here. we have two minutes left. We got it right here. Let's do lightning round. Lightning round. Uh, Max, uh, were you in Final Fantasy 15 specifically what voice? Was I in Final Fantasy 15 specifically what voice? Thank you. I've been waiting for this question <laughs> all night. Um, I was in Final Fantasy 15 specifically. I was in the Gladio DLC uh, as Soul number. Or <laughs> oh hell yeah! Uh, and also, I was in Final Fantasy XV King's Glaive, the film, as Tread Furia. If you don't know and you've seen the film, Tread Furia is the guy who spits on Aaron Paul's character, uh, Nyx, and he says, "You're just like all the other rats and all the sewers and the holes." Whatever he says, I don't remember, but uh, very famous, very famous character. <laughs> And, uh, we'll bring him back. Never mentioned by name. He's getting his own spin-off, I heard, so yes. look forward to that. Spin-off into the distance. Yes. Tread Fury Road. Spin-off Fury, uh, yes. So out of the video games you've done, what's your favorite moment slash line from it? Favorite moment slash line in a video game? Anything. In anything? Any, well, any game. In any game! You're done. Yeah, we're done! Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, Robbie? Like the hotel scene on top of the motel where I, uh, where all Promptus fantasies were born. Uh, when Noctis and Prompto have their their romance talk, how uh, they love each other as brothers. That's my favorite. Uh, I love uh, the, the ending, all the way ending not to get stuff, so many great lines like, off my chair, Jester, the king sits here. I love that. It's so when he's a total badass, it's my favorite. In Persona 5, I really enjoy when uh, uh, Ryuji says to, uh, oh, what's his name? Kamoshida, uh, wipe that stupid smile off your face. Uh, but he says it like really angry. Uh, so I like, what that? Bum, 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 bum. That's just like that. That's my favorite line. Guys, so the reason it's my favorite line is because I really uh, got super angry in the booth and screamed it, and it was super passionate. And boy, yeah. Make me want to play that game. You guys, there's a great 17 minute super cut of every swear word Max says in Persona 5. <laughs> it is very funny if you get a chance to look it up. <laughs> it's super funny. Uh, lightning round, what is 60 seconds? Are we going to last questions? Let's go. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Can you quickly describe one of your characters in One Punch Man in a quick 
Haiku, what would it be? Haiku, what is Haiku? 575? 575. Uh, he is a bike man who rides around town saving. Moomin Rider. Love. <laughs> Uh, hero just for fun, <laughs> strength training, strongest hero, <laughs> get out of my way. Hey! <laughs> Large man loves small boys. <laughs> Don't go to prison or else. <laughs> He will find you. Gorp. <laughs> <laughs>